chapter, he's writing graffiti. And in fact, the name he's writing on the trains is Bronx. So um, hip hop does begin to play a role in the book, you know, when it becomes chronologically appropriate. Um, but you know, I guess trying to understand race and identity and its complexities is a through line in, in my work. So, you know, on the surface, Angry Black White Boy and the End of the Jews might not sort of look like they're connected to each other in any way, but I think they are. They're both investigations of similar issues. One is through this like wild satirical mode, and another is a much more sort of intimate and, and, and longer arching story. But you know, fundamentally, I'm trying to really do some of the same things in both. Do you find yourself, um, as an author, battling other authors? Um, <laughs> pop aesthetic, too. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, like, okay, I mean, I, I'll give you an embarrassing example, right? So, as, as, as Dr. Fisher said today, um, to, to, my, to my absolute shock, I found out that I won the California Book Award, right? Which is crazy, right? I mean, I mean, like that's that's crazy. Like that that's completely nuts to me. I, it, it came out of left field. Like I don't really win shit. My shit is too real to win awards. You know what I mean? So, um, at least that's what I've been telling myself. Um, but like yeah, like what what within within three seconds I was like yeah, like you know suck it, Michael Chabon. You know like, like, that was my reaction. Not like yeah, I won an award. Wow, that's great. But like yeah, like. What? Like, I'm doing freezes and shit in my living room, you know? <laughs> but then that means somebody like Jeff Chang walks in the room and is like, well, I want awards too, homie. Right, but see, but see, but see, but see, but see me and Jeff, you know, that's the same flip, right? right? So, so when Jeff wins, I win. Right. At least that's what I've been telling myself. <laughs> so, I mean, I think you, I, I do in some sense, I mean, I mean, yes and no, right? We're not fighting for a spot in the industry, because actually the people I respect and the people that I would want to battle um, you know, I think to battle somebody, you have to, I mean, you either have to want to destroy them and think they're a clown, or you have to feel enough respect to actually engage them, right? Like, a lot, like, when battles are one-sided, they're stupid, right? Like, <laughs> like you know, when, when KRS-1 battles Nelly, everybody's like, really? <laughs> like, the classic battles are, are at least somewhat equally matched. Jay-Z and Nas, KRS-1 and Shan, the legendary, you know, Busy B, Kumo D. You know, the, 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 the specter of a Rock Kim Big Daddy Kane battle that everybody was, you know, so hyped about. So, the, so I say that to say that the people that I respect enough to be competitive with, it's not like they sell books any more than I do. Like, people don't buy literary fiction, you know, they buy dumb shit. So, it's not like we're fighting for a spot in the industry. So, on that level, it's, it's, not, I mean, it's, it's not a fight still, that has. It's still a bragging rights, and I'll just give yeah. an example. The other night, I had a conversation in it came up that all these authors who have done big things are from the Bay Area. You know, and you start to think, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we claim Adam, we claim Jeff, we claim Ricky Vincent. You start running down the whole list. Right. And it's like, yeah, you know, this, this is what we do. Right. And then you've right. got folks right. from Chicago that sit around and go, well, let me show you. And they start tossing out a whole list. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, you know, in a way, no, it's not true. battle in a, in, a, in, a, in a sense of, <coughs> what battles have become when you're trying to destroy, but it's almost yeah. one of like, your next book has got to be the bomb because you have footsteps to follow, and if you are from the Bay and you put out a whack book, that yeah. just, yeah, you know, no, that just, some truth to that. Yeah. Some truth to that. Yeah. And, and there, are, there, are, there are clicks and stuff. I mean, I'm serious. When, I, like, when Jeff Chang won an American Book Award, I was, I was partying, because like, Jeff is my man, and he deserves it. It's big for him, it's big for hip hop. <laughs> And you then know. his seeds marry your seeds. And right, keep, exactly. Take keep the money, money all in the, the family. family. Exactly. <laughs> I just, that could, you know, now that I have a daughter, that could, that could actually happen. That was Ray Kwan and a Wu Tang Glacial um, Vice. Well, you know, Dan, Daniel Alarcon is like, you know, it, my best, I mean, it, it, my best friend is a novelist who, you know, wins crazy awards. And, you know, what's the expression? Every time a friend does well, a little part of you dies, right? Um, you know, but, uh, <laughs> so I had, to, I, had to, I had to bring him into the family. He's my daughter's godfather, so I had to, you know, pretend that I'm happy when he wins the Pulitzer next year. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I think there's a competitive edge, but I think one of the great things about the Bay, and also just about, like, you know, one of the great joys for me of what I get to do is travel and meet other writers and click up with them and, and build. So, like, you know, most, like, a huge number of my, my friends are writers or hip-hop intellectuals like yourself. And, you know, 
we, we get to hang and build and meet up in different cities and talk shit about the Cypress Hill black sheep <laughs> <laughs> situation. You know, it's good. Sorry, we all, yeah. He's like, what the hell? We all know each other. It's like the rocket thing, the lady right. said, cares one moment that we had a couple months ago. Go ahead, you had a question though. No, I want to know. I want to know what. Oh, <laughs> you don't want it. You don't, it's, it's really, you don't want it. This man. You don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, does anybody have a real question? No, no, no. Right there. I got a real question. We'll get to real questions for a second. I just want to give an example. He wants to learn, Dave. No, no. There's two ways in which you can battle, and you can have these type of discussions. One way is just shooting the breeze, but the other way is if we were to actually play this out, with having to look and really evaluate the social and political conditions of a period of time and seeing how particular artists or moments in time had impact. And so if you have this discussion about Black Sheep versus Cypress Hill, it could be a very simple thing like who rhymes better, or it could be like what did Cypress Hill mean to Los Angeles, to Latinos, to a particular um, genre of people or segment of the population that smokes weed, and since they politicize that, what does that all mean? What does it mean for them to have a 20-year career? What does it mean for all the groups that spun off? Versus now the type of just trying to win the argument. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but you can make the same type yeah, of thing. Yeah, and yeah. I share that with you, not, not to make a point here, but to say that these can be teachable moments when you have those discussions. And if you do have those discussions, at least when I engage in them, yeah. they go on that level. Definitely. It goes on that type of conversation <laughs> To really see how, you know, what it is that we're champion right. had an impact, or it could be just really simple. If it's really simple, it's kind of a waste of time. But if it, but the reason why you've had this debate with other people for so long yeah. is because people have been coming <coughs> through like, yo, right? And yeah, some new facts for you right. to right. They, they, cite, because, they cite data and yeah, and right. and, re, and peer reviewed research, like we right. asked you to do on your midterm. Exactly, and because it'll, it, it it shines a light on something much bigger, right? Like we don't ultimately really care that much about who had a better album. It's what we can learn and discuss on but a much broader level, that right? And I think and that, that's exciting too. I mean, is the ways in which hip hop. Um, brings you to these battlefields around class, around history, around gender, around sexuality, around race, all through a very small lens. Like, you can start a conversation about, you know, like, there's a book coming out on Nas's album Illmatic. It's a collection of essays edited by Michael Eric Dyson and a cat named Sohail, whose last name I can't pronounce. Um, and it's like 15 different writers doing pieces on Illmatic. And that sounds, at first glance, like a questionable idea. Like, who really wants to read that? But um, the piece that I did for it is a conversation between me and Kevin Koval, poet from Chicago. And you know, you start with that and you take it in all these directions. Next thing you know, you're talking about uh, drug law, you know, the history of housing projects in Queens, the relationship between jazz and hip hop is illustrated by Nas and his father Oludara, the transitional moment hip hop was in in 1994, the producers who worked on that album. You know, you, you, you inevitably create this whole landscape. In some ways, it's not different from writing a novel. You focus on something very specific, but a whole world gets created out of that seed. There were real questions, though. <laughs> not that wasn't a great teacher. Have you ever thought about adapting your novel to screenplay? Um, there, wasn't there an extra credit? Oh, opportunity. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been, Angry Black White Boy has been optioned for the screen a couple of times by directors and other interested folks. Um, so I have. A couple people have written screenplays. I am one of them, actually. So the, there is a screenplay version out there. And it was also adapted for the stage. Um, Intersection for the Arts and the Mission did what ended up being a, a three-month a three run of it, actually. Um, not based on a script that I wrote, based on something entirely uh, separate. <laughs> <laughs> and it was an extra opportunity. Was it? But you know, speaking of screenplays, and just another props to the bay. And tried better this weekend. Nova Piper, who is you know a well-known rapper in Oakland for a long time, he's with the group Flipside. He just won the award this weekend for best screenplay in nice. Tribeca. Nice. So you know, so you win an award and all that. That's that the area, you know, stuff when you look at it. You know. Hand signal, please. I'm sorry, I'm very far today. Any any other questions? 
Because there was a request for a little, just a tiny sneak preview. The new joint? Okay. You, it, yeah? Okay. I mean, Ryan is pretty into the jeans.